Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. I am so proud to uh, reintroduce you to Leah Ho Becker, who has been here uh, uh, many times with many of her books. And she's just a, a darling woman whom I really, I just adore having her here. She's actually a tax attorney with an income and estate tax practice. She lives with her husband in Palm Beach County. But the most important thing is the book she's written. I promise to keep quiet. Uh, I'm sorry. This is one of the books. I promise to keep quiet after I'm dead, maybe. The other book was I Promise to Stay Married this time. And the last book before this one is Children, I'm Home. I mean, she's quite a character. She ought to be on Saturday Night Live. I've always told her that. But now this isn't as... Well, it's funny, but it's pretty serious. It's called My Name's Not Robbie Anymore. All right, so introduce yourself, Leah Hope Becker. How you doing? Oh, I'm okay. I'm getting uh, wound up here. Yeah, you are getting wound up. And, and when we first introduced this book, you first had to tell me what you were doing. You said, I, I have to tell you, this is a little unusual, Anita. Uh, and why don't you talk a little bit about why it's unusual? Is this not an everyday book? Uh, <laughs> well, when I started it, I got a lot of funny looks. Including from you. And um, Cause I, I said, it, what does she know about this? All right. Now, I am now going to say what, what the book's about, not how it ends, but what the book's about. And it is about a 70-year-old mother. She happens to be Jewish, but that's not a, 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 a real critical aspect of it, except for some of the, the phraseology and the cultural thinking. And she has two, she is married for 49 years to a very conservative husband. Very, uh, you know, sort of a, a, well, he's a hunting and fishing kind of guy. Very, uh, and and she's rather modern. She's uh, into psychology and, uh, well, just about everything. This is a novel, everybody. Yeah, oh, it is definitely fictional. And, um, what I, the way this concept started, uh, which is uh, she got a surprise from one of her unmarried two unmarried children. She had two unmarried children. One, the boy is forty two. The girl is thirty seven. And uh, the way this idea developed is from my own experience. I have some children. I have three children who are adults and. They do things that surprise me. And then I found out from talking to people that most parents of adult children do things that surprise them. And I thought in one kind of creative moment, what would be the biggest surprise that one of my kids could give me? And and it wouldn't even be marriage, divorce, or going to jail. It wouldn't even be that. It is that... The son, whom we thought was gay and had lived out of town and had lived a kind of a private life, calls the mother up and says, Mom, are you sitting down? And, uh, no, I'm standing up, and what are you looking at? And, you know, and she's going on and on because she's uh, good at talking instead of listening. He said, this is very hard to tell you. Okay, but, well, you know, but what about your this and what about your that and your crying, you know. And then he says, um, I've just been released from the hospital. And she says, oh, what's wrong? Oh, Robbie, what's wrong? And he says, um, I've had an operation. Well, what kind of an operation? Well, it's a sex change operation. And... And, and he was living out of town, and they, and in one of the um, questions that uh, arises is how come she didn't know about it? Were they estranged? It turned out, and I will say this much about the book: that he was absolutely certain that his father would disown him. You don't do that kind of thing. And there are experts today who are maintaining that this is not natural. I have heard some of them on the radio. 
and I'm not going into the controversy. I am just telling a story about how this family is going to deal with this. So after the mother picks herself up off the floor, she doesn't faint. What does she say? <laughs> he says, uh, I think he, I think, uh, I don't remember the right. exact words. Right. I think yeah. he, he said, are you okay, mother? She <laughs> said, well, I, w- I thought I was going to have a seizure. <laughs> well, uh, uh, how's your heart? Well, uh, it's beating, but it's irregular. And she's, she's a kind of person who has to make everything a joke. She's a writer. She's not a famous writer. She's a sort of a, you know, a send away to a magazine kind of writer. She's nobody that is well known. But her outlook is always try to make it happy. Don't don't let it be a bad thing. So she's uh, making a joke. And then she finds out that, yes, he really did have the operation. and He went the full operation. He has the uh, the new uh, equipment, and it, it is now a she. It's called it, it's called a sex reassignment surgery. I looked I looked that up. So she said. So after a while, this is all in the first chapter. She's thinking, and then she's thinking. Is it reversible? <laughs> and there's a, and there's a silence on the phone, and he said. Mother, it's not like a raincoat. (laughs) So it is obvious from the beginning that these two have a rapport and that the mother will be okay. But the father is the big issue. And that's why the son... And, and how he got the, the money for it is, is explained in the book because it is a very expensive procedure. And it takes a long time to get, it takes years to really have this total, what they call a transition. And then the hormones and yeah. all the other things. Oh, but there's a lot, it takes years. But I, I loved, I'll tell you some of the parts that I loved is when, okay, now the father knows, and we won't go into that because that was really something, but... And how he, you know, had to deal with it. But it's now they're worried about the relatives <laughs> and going to the wedding. I mean, this it's like it's one thing. OK, so my son now is a, is is my daughter and I have to deal with my husband and all, just what you're saying. But now when people ask me how my son is and of course his name isn't Robbie anymore. What is it? Oh, uh, well, they they uh, they align on a name and the name becomes Robin. Right. And so now they have to deal with, do they tell people? Do they not tell people? What do they hide him in a closet? I mean, and, um, and he's, I, I mean, I really liked him actually in the book. I thought he was very nice and I was happy that the mother, as you said, was dealing with it in the best way, hoping that he would change his mind, but of course couldn't change his mind. But his sister played a very important part. Yes. Yes. And the father, and I don't want to tell, uh, like what happens because you, you know need to what, read the book. It's you a gotta wonderful read the book. book. It is a wonderful book. But the father book. was just in a state of disbelief, disowning, and refusal. So how how does it end? By the book. Yeah, right. By the book. Well, let's tell you how you can do that because I'm. A, you can go to Amazon. Dot com and the name of the book is now just get your get your pencils out. Remember, this is Pencil Talk Radio. My name's not Robbie anymore, and it's by Leah L E A Hope H O P E Becker. I think it's a very good thing to buy this book because you will learn a lot about what's going on now with transgender people, and also that it's it's very funny. I mean, as much as it's a serious subject, Leah is quite a comic, and I I told you she should be on Saturday Night Live, but she does a great job with this book. She, um, you just have to go from page to page to page, and it's very explanatory, and I think it's good because as much as you were bringing into something, I know you've done research in order to write this. This was not casual for you. I had to do some research. First, I came up with the idea of doing it, 
Then I did the research, but I do everything backwards. And so have you ever been with a transgender person? Uh, yet? Not yet. Exactly. I have begun to make some um, uh, attempts to uh, do real interviews. I'll bet there are support groups that will be popping there, up here, there especially are. in South Beach. There are. And I'm sure you could be invited, bring your book. I think because it's a wonderful book. I think they would appreciate the book. I think so. And I do have uh, many friends in the gay community. In fact, I have uh, a, a gay, what I call a content editor. When I, when I went to all these uh, writers' workshops, I found out that there's developmental editors and there's, you know, editors that do all the typos and all that. But what about an editor who has been in the gay community, has been through the process of coming out and knows transgender people and knows uh, all the issues. And that's the person I chose to read the manuscript and correct the wrong assumptions. And also, if anything was uh, blatantly offensive, uh, that w did not have a place in this book. So there is nothing that this content editor deemed as blatantly offensive. We had a lot of disagreements because I had a lot of um, uh, material in the book that really has to do with the, the mother and the mother and the father's relationship, it, whereas it, because the book is written from the mother's point of view. Yes. It's the only way I could do it. Sure. Um, and I think what what made it so um, sensitive is your not... You know, in your style of laughter and joking, it was in the right places. It, it, everything you did was was okay. So it wasn't as you were making fun of him. You were, it just, the responses to when people heard what he had done were funny, the way you wrote it. And that was very hard to do. Not everyone could have handled it as well, Leah. Thank you. Yeah, I felt that because... I, I told you before that my father uh, was gay, he became gay when he, he probably was gay for many, many years, but when he was 40, my mother and father had divorced and my father went on to be a lawyer and it was in having a house in Carl Gables that he bought, he took in rumors, you know, he took in, we used to call that rumors, people who moved in to your house and, and he obviously realized, because these were men, that he was gay. And so I lived a life, um, it was, I was 12, and I remember loving my father, so I would go and see him, and he always had interesting people there, gay men, and even the show people, there was a whole, the jewel box was in Miami many, many years ago, and this was all with the gay guys. And so I grew up with watching what, what people would have thought was not quite normal at that time, even though now it's certainly very common. So when you went into this, this does not surprise me. As a matter of fact, uh, I remember when we, I was always attracted to people who were of the opposite, who were uh, men or women who then dressed up as men or women, you know, the opposite. And they looked gorgeous, whether it was a man or it was a woman. And now that, a lot of that was just transvestites, I guess. But well, maybe they were transgender. I don't know what it was. But I always thought I would look at them just like I look at Bruce Jenner now who is gorgeous, you know, Caitlin. And, and of course, Bruce must have known how he felt a long time. Uh, but he, it was so preposterous that he would do something like this, especially someone out in the public the way he is. But I think it's, it's been great for a society for them to see someone who they really admired as an athlete and who has been very open about what she's doing now. I think that a lot of people are having a hard time with this. And uh, I know people who are having a hard time with this. And I have heard, uh, I've heard on talk radio. The oh, pro, yeah, but the I, I know. The, but know but this those is, are some very right-wing uh, people who are well, hard with everything. Well, you, you could say that, but you could also say this is a country... And I don't know, I don't know other countries <clears throat> that well, but this is a country of a lot of divisiveness 
where people have opinions and somebody can make a, a, a bunch of uh, arguments and be right. And another person can say, yes, but there's another way to look at this and they could be right. And they're diametrically opposed. And that's what I think is out there. It's sometimes I sense it in, in, in ways that something that I might believe that somebody else is absolutely has the opposite belief. You know, it happens in, it happens to families when they uh, have it happen to themselves. You see, you could have a family that have very strong opinions and all of a sudden it's in their own family, whether it's someone gay or there's been somebody that's done something that's crazy or there are people with mental illness. And, and, and so when it happens to you and your own family, you have a different look on, on what it really is. But it's easy to look on the outside and say, oh, I could never do that, or how ridiculous, or what could happen. But when it's with someone you love, just like the father in this, in this book, the father was a tough guy, but he did love his son. And so what happens, and I won't give it away either, is very interesting because love can conquer all. It can. It doesn't always work that way. No, but it can. And and when when people are, everybody has shadows in their life. Everybody has something that they that if they expose themselves about, maybe would be pretty bad. Look, we've seen this with this the guy that was the chairman of the Senate, you know, for so long. The the Senate, you know, the leader of the the Senate, and and look at him now. I mean, he's had some pretty serious problems. And so uh, we, we've seen this a lot, the priests and all. And so there are things out there, and people just have to say, okay, we're all human beings, fresh, flesh and blood. Uh, our mind works differently. You know, this brain is, a, is something, and it just functions differently. But let's get back to your book, because the reason the book is so good is it does handle something. Well, first of all, because we didn't have a Bruce Jenner coming out at the time you did this, which is very interesting. You just came up with this idea, which was uh, an impossible idea. And the illustration, I have to attribute this to your husband. Her husband is a, is a real famous illustrator. And, and in the book, every one of their books, he does the cover, and they're gorgeous. They're just, I mean, they're so simple. So here you see the picture of this grandmotherly-looking person with a phone. And, and in the cloud of the, who's on the phone is, his, is her son with his mustache and his hairy legs, hairy arms, in a dress with a bow and a big blonde wig. I mean, it is beautiful. It, you know, you've done such a great job. Um, I, I just have to say that, yeah, it is. You're, you're very, very sensitive to this. I think people would learn a lot. I think they'll enjoy the book. Let's go to Amazon.com. And then after you do and you read it, let's give some comments on Amazon. I'm going to go and do that for you. I hadn't done that. I probably should do that for every one of our book reviews. And I thank you for bringing that up to me. So now when you go to speak and people I'm sure want you to speak, w there's going to be a lot of arguments. There'll be a lot of discussion, won't there? Well, if, I, if I speak specifically on that subject, which is um, something I'm considering, I am now trying to nail down my topics. And just like everything else in in life, if you ask uh, let's say you ask three different authors, uh, how should I focus for the beginning of my um, making, uh, you know, speeches, talks? And uh, I've gotten three different uh, suggestions. One says focus on one topic. One says give them a choice of topics. Well, uh, I'm going to wind up doing what I like to do and they have a concept in, um, and this is uh, for authors and uh, comedians and, you know, people that want to um, display their smarts, and it is called branding. And, uh, it's called what? Branding. branding. Yes, branding. Yeah, it's, it's not where they, uh, they put a big A on your flesh. <laughs> it is what is your brand. Yep. And I have had to look at myself and say, well, what is my brand? Well, 
I can't just say, well, I like to uh, insert humor because that's too general. Because uh, I I would have a hard time um, uh, inserting humor into, let's say, a um, a surgeon's office. I would have a hard time. I might be able to do it, but it would be very difficult. And that's not would, what you do. It is not what I do. What I do is what I know. And family, what, you take family, family situations, yes, marriage, yes, which I've had experience yes. with. Yes. Divorced, which I've had experience <laughs> right, with. Right. Adult children, right. which I have experience right, with. Exactly. So my brand is uh, family relationships and humor, but there's still going to be subtopics. And there'll be seriousness in it because I think it always hits a certain um, chime. There's a certain thing in your books we all can read and say, oh, yeah. I remember that's the same thing that my kid did that she did that he did that my husband did this you're right and and that's what and don't change for anybody don't take any advice from anybody just it's like there's sometimes people have a natural ability in art and then they go start taking classes and they lose all that don't do that you have an ability to take simple situations and make them very funny and I think that that with family and I think that you should stick with it what you've been doing and this is a situation you've delved a little deeper on this one but little did you know that there was going to be this national you know celebrity who who really uh opened the path for you i really would like to see you and you probably have done this sent one a copy to him her Uh, well i i haven't done it yet because i am uh really not in the world of uh authorship I am not a best-selling author at this stage, and I am taking steps to expand my horizons. And I even have a concept, a term for it. I call it incremental boldness. And the concept Mm. is, okay, well, I'm kind of afraid to do this. But if I think about it long enough, I'm going to eventually say to myself, what the heck, I'm going to do it. So I haven't done it yet, but... You know, what's the worst that could happen? Well, why don't you let me send the book to him? And he doesn't remember me from being on, but I could certainly send it as someone who we did. I would be glad to do that. Fine, get me his address. Let me send this book to him for you. If I, that would make I, you I, happy, I, I, I would be glad I to accept, do it. I accept, and, and, and somehow I transmitted my brain waves, and, <laughs> you, and you picked them up. I did, whatever it was. Of course yeah, I'm going to oh, help you. Oh, I know how to transmit <laughs> brain waves. So we're going to do that. I'd be glad to, because I think that that she, Caitlin, would enjoy it. I'm sure there are a lot of parts in here that she's enjoying, especially with the family she's been dealing with, with the Kardashians and all. So this is a perfect thing. I'll do that. I'll say that we thought enough of it to review it in our magazine. And then I also felt that uh, it uh, it's a very, very good rendition. And this was done. What was the date that you had in your book? Let's see. You're it's talking 2014. about the, the publication date? Yeah. yeah the 2000. publication date, I believe, is November 2014. Right. And so he just, she just came out. So he'd know, she'd know that well, this was not because the, of I that. I didn't write the book on November right, 2004. Right. Exactly. Start, exactly. In, oh, two in years? Fact, in fact, the, the, the day that the concept was hatched is a day that will live in a, a writer's workshop infamy. infamy. <laughs> and I have a, you know. So there are two years. So it took you, the time that you were just It was almost two years. About yeah. two years. Yeah. And this was just an idea that you had. And then yeah. what I, yeah. And, and we'll talk about the other books you did too. And I think I could write. It's going to be a short little note. You just get me something. And I, because I'm sure he's getting all sorts of publicity, you know, good and bad, as you said. So we want to be careful. Well. This has been wonderful having you come here, Leah, and and your book and your explanation. And I hope people will buy it. It's a kind of a book that it's going to knock your socks off. I, I, I really mean that. You're going to start reading. See, I go and I review a lot of books. And sometimes I just go through them a little bit. I couldn't put it down. I read every single word. I love the book. It taught me a lot. It's so funny. But it was really... You know, um, I mean, I, I just would even, if I have, I don't even have time, I was going to read one thing, uh, uh, but they have to go to a wedding and then they don't know how to introduce their 
son, daughter. I mean, <laughs> it's so funny. I mean, I just love this. Uh, uh, I, I don't. Too bad. I should have read something from it, but we don't have any time. So I want to thank you very much. Just going to make somebody who will re read it, and then you can uh, you'll enjoy it. So thanks for being here with us. I th and thank you, Anita. I really, I really appreciate it. It's, oh, wait, I have to give you your website. It's leahhopebecker.com, L-E-A-H-O-P-E-B-E-C-K-E-R, leahhopebecker.com.